Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's comes at us from Brad, Closure in Moscow, Church of the Techno Christ. There's no context on this, but I don't really think that I need any. It's Closure in Moscow, and it comes off of their Pink Lemonade album, which was their most up-to-date uh, before they had a new album come out last year. This came out in 2014 on the album Pink Lemonade. I think I said that. I don't remember. But I don't need any context. I've enjoyed everything I've heard from Closure in Moscow, and the one or two tracks we've heard from Pink Lemonade were both awesome too, so I'm always excited to check out more. Let's dive in and see what Closure in Moscow is bringing to the table today. Crystal in the eye, jets among the tongue. The impermanent No sisters, no brothers No fathers, no mothers No daughters and no sons If you shed the substrate You will find The multitude becomes one Testify that you may circumvent the analog Okay, this is nice. Solid groove here. Won't you get Okay, I 
that's a interesting way to dissipate energy. So I do like the jazzy guitar work. But all the psychedelic things, it's a very interesting contrast for me. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. <laughs> yeah, keeping that rhythm all over the drums. Such a smart way to retain that vibe. On the ride to the hi-hat. Yeah, Closure of Moscow, they do not ever disappoint. Like, legit, ever. I don't think I've heard a bad song but from them, ever. I do want to touch on something real quick, though, before we get into some musical stuff. Um, we had that that southern, passionate uh, preacher vo vocal delivery there around like the four and a half minute mark, five minute mark. Uh, that mixed with the really wide choir and groups vocals, group singing that we have around the lead vocalist. Both have a very churchy vibe to them. This is called Church of the Techno Christ. Is this what it's called? Yeah, that's what it's called. I like that. Bringing in some of that imagery there. All right. Music, though. There is... There's some cool stuff going on in here. I don't think I need to lead with that, but I'm buying some time. Um, it is super funky. I mean, syncopation, right? All over the place. It's just really tough not to move your body to this song. It is so infectious. Uh, this would be perfect for next week's theme, which is infectious grooves. Because, uh, dang, that's this whole song. It's, it's groovy, man. Groovy. But aside from the funky uh, syncopated elements in all of it, it's also very psychedelic, which is groovy in a different way, man. I'm not always sure that the psychedelic parts fit. And I knew this going in, right? Um, they're, I've always kind of envisioned them as a more palatable, psychedelic, heavy version of Mars Volta. They still have a bit of a like uh, post-hardcore the foundation to it especially the vocals like they would fit in a swan core anything that's really developed out of the post hardcore scene into something that embraced a uh, more positive vibe swan core would be a really good place for that bands like dance gap and dance i could really see these vocals working in um, but they still have a, a core 
foundation of like this post hardcore element. Um, but they build off of it in, in ways that I feel are more psych heavy and more palatable than uh, Mars Volta, but I do still hear a lot of similarities between the two groups. I don't know where I was going with that, but it's very cool to hear all of this. The, the, the psych parts do work most of the time, and I think the part that only uh, kind of worked for me was the solo section. I thought that the atmospheric, texture-based panning screams or, or screeching, I don't even know what those sounds were, on top of and sort of doing a call and response against the solo guitar just wasn't really cutting it for me. It was a strange juxtaposition and maybe that's what it's supposed to be. This is the church of the techno Christ. Christ was already, uh, we're talking about Jesus Christ in this context, he was already of two worlds, the uh, godly form and the mortal form. And now we have a techno version, we have a digital version of something that was already of two modes. So maybe the the schism between the two sides, the, the psychedelic textures versus the uh, smooth jazz guitar is supposed to feel awkward given what we're talking about here, a technologically based mortal god. I don't know, the lyrics, we'll, we'll get into that later. Uh, but that was really the only part that felt a bit awkward to me. Now, dude, we gotta talk about the drummer. I feel like this discussion isn't going to be as in-depth as usual. I was jamming along. I don't know if that was, like, noticeable or anything, but, uh, yeah, I did not pay as close attention to this as normal. I really hope that uh, Brad is cool with that. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I did. It was tough not to just get into a very casual mindset. But anyways, the drummer is an absolute beast. But here's the cool thing, right? Yes, the drummer displays a lot of technical chops. Yes, there's a lot of polyrhythm going on in here. Um, and yes, that polyrhythm tends to, within the drums, tends to also get contrasted against rhythms in the bass and guitar as well, creating more levels of rhythmic uh, depth. Very cool stuff all around, but the drummer also does it in a super tasteful way. At no point did I ever think the drummer was overdoing it. Up until we got to the end and the drummer started to show off a little bit and kind of veered into a point of uh, making that part about them rather than having a part that amplifies the track. But I think by that point in the song, and it was such a short moment anyways, the drummer kind of earned it. Uh, it just an absolute master class at balancing complex playing with what the song needs and always finding the middle point there and never leaning towards something that's so simple that it drags the song down but never something so complex that it pulls the attention from everything else just to the drummer and it does so while retaining the ability to just be completely transfixing if i chose to focus solely on the drums and just lose my mind trying to imagine what this drummer is doing as I hear all of these different complex rhythmic elements. Um, just master class, man. But even on top of that, we have the variety of drum fills in here, little metric modulations to punctuate the end of phrases, uh, and even neat little ideas like the guitar during the the jazz solo bringing up this triplet feel for a little bit the drummer leaning into it after the guitarist had done it for uh, a bar or a bar and a half the drummer picking it up in the bass kick so they're doing this rhythm together the guitarist moves on and the drummer naturally pulls this into everything it moves from the bass kick into the ride cymbal and then every bar it bounces between the ride cymbal and the hi-hat not only giving us a shorter ting versus a a wider crashier sound that also gets offset whenever he closes the hi-hat and cuts it short we have the bouncing back and forth between those timbres but it also moves between the two panning so it sounds like that idea started in one place of the song got layered somewhere else and then that got passed around and looped around over there too and it was just a very cool way of, of having this this dialogue 
of having an idea start in one place and infect another, a different instrument entirely, and then different elements of that instrument. Absolutely wonderful, and I don't know who came up with that idea, but it's such a good addition to this. Uh, and the drummer just incorporating it into the song is, is so good. Now, on the concept of polyrhythms, they're all over the place. The song exclusively takes place in 4-4. Pretty easy to follow if you're listening to any of the backbeat instruments, primarily the bass kick, sometimes the snare. The bass tends to emphasize quarter notes, so we have an emphasized beat there. But there's so many hits from the guitar, from the bass, even from the vocalist at times as uh, that one point when they just kept hammering home the same note equal distant from another over and over. Uh, that was all on offbeats. That was syncopation against the downbeat. So there's, there's a plethora of instruments who play accented beats off of the downbeat. And it creates this... This groove, infectious groove throughout the entire track. And we even have multiple layers of this occasionally where maybe the bass will be laying down quarter notes. There's our backbone to the song. And then both the drums and the guitarist will be playing around that and giving us all these cool um, syncopated hits around the, the core four beats. And it's just like, it's what makes the song feel so snappy, so crisp. Uh, why why it has such a pop to it it's it's not like a it's not like a fluid movement right that's more like legato stuff this is like short strict funky stuff and it just makes you want to like i don't know move in very sharp movements and a lot of that comes down to the ways that is uh that the rhythms are written throughout the track now i don't really know how to bring this one up but it's the vocalist absolute phenomenal so much power and presence to the vocals even on softer quieter sections just absolutely commanding the sound that they're within it doesn't matter what other instruments are playing they are where your ears are going to be drawn to but there's a nice balance to it too they're never overbearing it's not like a pop style production where the vocals are so far above the rest of the music volume wise they're still mixed rather nicely they just have a little bit more oomph to them so that your ear is drawn towards them. But it isn't just that either. The vocalist has a lot of dexterity here. We have some higher pitched belts in here towards the end of the song. He does go for just, not, not even belts, because to me a belt is a, a, a falsetto with a lot of air pressure behind it. But just higher range chest stuff going on too. Um, it is it's just really impressive the range that this dude has and the ability to deliver all of these different styles whether it's a bit more sharper in staccato more legato and loose full presence or maybe a little airy just to give some introspection to it something a bit lighter uh, the dude just got chops for all of it such a wide range of, of volume but also expression and I, I love listening to the dude uh, it is one of the big draws, I think, for this band, for me anyways, uh, is the vocalist. And, you know, piggybacking on that is also the production in here is super crisp and clear. Just enough grit to give it some edge, but never an, any that would disrupt the, the readability or the listenability of it. To be able to distinguish everything that's going on, which I think is very important because there's usually a lot of things going on. And so a lot of praise to the producer for keeping things clear yet energetic. It doesn't feel dull or lifeless. It has enough compression to, to give it that extra energy. But again, never enough to, to clutter things up. There's probably a lot that I'm missing. I don't remember what the structure is of this track. Um, I want to praise the bass, but honestly, all I remember was super funky foundational stuff, which is very important in this type of music. Uh, one detail is we got a little bit of a bluesy lick. I thought we were going in that direction at one point. Um, there's some interesting dispersal of energy where they build up to get rid of everything. I'm not a huge fan of those. Maybe the lyrics will help change my opinion on that, but they did it twice. These fake out buildups and probably could have done without those but they do add a specific 
vibe to the song and maybe unfulfilled promises uh, a fake out build up could be part of the track might just be biased since it, it's a church <laughs> yeah all right i didn't mean to i didn't mean to start anyways uh yeah like i said though it's just a very casual listen for me on this one i, I got into it and forgot i was in front of the camera forgot i needed to analyze it but yeah this is just a blast every single second of it and everybody's so talented too i don't think there's a single instrument in here where i was like yeah you know they're just they're doing the bare minimum to get that paycheck no nah, everyone's putting their heart and soul into this let me read some lyrics on this and uh, we'll see what's up after that yeah so the church of a techno christ uh, this is a concept album, I suppose, according to the description of the song. The main character is called The Fool, with a capital F. No name, but they're not in a great place right now. And so they, they wind up in this church, and this uh, pastor guy tells them how great it is to just plug into the holy mainframe. And allow it to delete your sins that kind of vibe and all the ways that church can make you feel better but with digital ling language and uh, electronic language around it i really liked one line uh, it says we'll prime you for data eucharistic escart card escart is old it predates me i only know about it because my dad used to talk about it uh but it, it's an old audio video hookup think like hdmi but like 60 years ago 70 years ago um it was a multi-pin port thing and it's like of all the ways you could describe uh an av port to plug in because uh, after it says, you know, plug you in, delete your sin. Well, don't forget your charger, right? Like, Escart, why so old? <laughs> oh, man, that was, that got me, though. But yeah, it's, it's this idea of plugging into the great mainframe, the holy mainframe, and having your sins not washed away, but deleted. You'll feel so much better afterwards. Don't give it a single thought, he says. Just plug it into the hole in your brain. You'll be fine. It says you won't have to deal with it anymore. You can have a digital rebirth. You can stave off death indefinitely. It says get down on the floor. Put your hands up for our Lord. His gospel's made of lithium and silicone. Everyone plug your mind in and there will be a holy mainframe waiting for you. And it's just so delightfully um, cheesy, almost tacky. To just take a lot of, like I mentioned, like, like typical, stereotypical, even uh, churchy phrases that you would expect the pastor to say. And just like remove one word and put in something computery. And, uh, you know, they don't have regular communion. They have tech communion. Uh, it's, it's kind of cracks me up. There is one part in here I vaguely remember in the song. I got to go back and listen to it, but it says, "Now get down on your na 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 knees, na 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 knees, na 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 knees," and it immediately made me think of uh, Guns N' Roses. Welcome to the gun, the gungeon. Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> Guns N' Roses, man, had had me on the guns thing. And uh, I vaguely remember this in the song. And I remember thinking, oh, that reminds me of something. And then I totally forgot about it because, you know, I'm jamming out. It's just a good, it's a good track. But yeah, I wonder if that was purposefully done. In fact, later on towards the song, when he decides to start belting, the vocalist does, that also sort of reminds me of some of that 80s hair metal stuff. Uh, or heavy metal. I don't know what Guns N' Roses is. But, you know, hair metal also had high-pitched belting too. So I'm just going to throw it in there. Um, and I'm curious if this was more of a coincidence or something intentionally put in to, to directly reference Welcome to the Jungle and then also to incorporate some of that iconic vocal work in here as well. Granted, later on down the line. Um, 
There is one moment, though, where our protagonist kind of has second thoughts. It says, now wait a socket jack in minute. <laughs> Which had me cracking up. Because, like, it just feels like a southern thing to say, right? Wait, wait, wait a, you know, whatever. You just kind of throw some syllables out there. Um, and you just say minute after it. Or, or anything, you know? I feel like a lot of uh, southern lingo is just ad-libbing stuff that sounds about right. Kind of has a gut feeling to it. But if you think about it, you're like... Actually, what is a socket jack in minute? It doesn't take a minute to, to put a jack into a socket. It just takes a couple of seconds. Uh, but it feels right, right? It feels right to say, and the point typically gets put across. So I like that while also retaining the technological element of socks and jackets. Sockets and jacks. I'm getting lost in the lingo. Anyways, he says, wait a minute, can't you see that they'd have you refracting through isolated prisms? What if you're wrong? What if there ain't no holy mount mainframe? Not, what if there isn't? What if there ain't no? Got the double negative in there. This is just, it, it feels so Southern. I'm really curious where Closure on Moscow uh, hail from. Because this whole song just feels Southern. Not just in the delivery of some of it, but the lines, the, the words themselves... Anyways, continues on. Keep your hopes up and your downloads. <laughs> Software straight from the tabernacle. So how can we go wrong? Let's hook your brain up and load it up. It's just... It's so good. Also, at the end, during the baptism, in the name of the chipset and the holy motherboard. <laughs> it's so good. Um, but yeah, that's the whole song. It's, it's this, this preacher dude who, I, I don't know if they're nefarious or anything. Like we just, we get this very one dimensional side of them. They seem to believe what they're doing, but our protagonist is also named the fool. So I have to kind of have a little bit of, of hesitancy and maybe our preacher guy is taking advantage of this dude. So I don't, I've never listened to the album. Maybe that it gets explained in other tracks, but that's the whole song. He's just making this church of the download of the techno Christ seem very alluring to somebody who's a bit gullible and down on their luck and could probably find anything that would make them feel a little bit better and go along with it. And they seem to be going along with it, though they are hesitant. It does seem by the end of the song that they do. What any of that has to do with the music I don't know. Aside from that one very southern preacher delivery from the vocalist towards the end of the track, uh, jazzy, psychedelic, funky rock with a dash of post-hardcore vocals, it's not anything that I relate to this church of uh, the Technochrist thing. Uh, I don't feel anything churchy in here. I did mention the choir and the supporting vocals kind of lean into that, but otherwise... Uh, this feels like they they wrote the type of music that they write well, and the lyricist came up with a story, and they just put the two together. And I don't think there's actually too many ties between them, but those are just my thoughts on Closure in Moscow as the Church of the Technochrist. Let me know if you do see a connection between those. Maybe you do find a thematic tie between the music and the lyrics, Maybe you just want to correct me on something that I misspoke about, or you have your own thoughts about this track that is completely opposite of what I picked up on. Maybe you heard something I didn't. Put all that stuff down in the comments section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It'll take you to this menu right here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow, though, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.